I'm frequently asked, how on earth do you know where to dig? Well, that is a great question. And it actually bears on some of the tools and the methods that archaeologists employ. So I'm going to talk about the concept of archaeological surveying, that is, the process of looking for sites. I'm also going to introduce you to the various types of remote sensing that are now used by archaeologists. Now, first of all, let's define what we mean by a site, because these come in all shapes and sizes. Within their textbook, In the Beginning, Brian Fagan and Nadia Durrani define a site simply as a place where traces of past human activity can be found. And these are normally identified by the presence of artifacts. Some of them are pretty obvious. For example, when you look at the Athenian Acropolis or a huge mound like Megiddo in Israel, you know that you're looking at an ancient site. But others can be very tiny and almost indiscernible. A site can be as small as a scatter of flakes where somebody once made a stone tool, or as large as Machu Picchu in Peru. The trick is to find the ones that aren't so easy to detect. There are two basic ways to find sites. Doing reconnaissance on the ground, and doing it from the air or even from space these days. Ground surveys first began to be popular in the 1960s and 70s, and then they gained speed in the 1980s. In part, that's because they're usually a much cheaper alternative to digging, and they can cover a lot more ground. They also allow you to ask and to answer different types of questions than you can when you're digging a single site. So for instance, you might want to investigate how intensively a specific area in Greece was occupied during the Bronze Age. Did that settlement pattern change during the following Dark Ages? And what happened when things began to return to normal and we get into the eras of archaic and then classical Greece? What happened in the region when the Romans arrived? What was it like in the Byzantine period? And how about the Ottoman period or the modern period? Ground surveys can help you answer these kinds of questions. By doing surveys and identifying the various sites from different periods in the area, you can actually construct a history of the region without ever digging at a single site. Many surveys, though, do lead into an excavation afterward as the archaeologists zoom in on one or more of the most promising new sites that they've just found and get a permit to dig there. These days, though, instead of leading with a ground survey, it actually makes more sense to start with aerial surveys, if you can afford them. This can be as simple as buying aerial photographs or satellite images from specific companies, or as complicated and expensive as arranging for overhead flights using LIDAR to survey your area. Now, we'll remember, we'll, we will return to LIDAR in a moment, but if you want to buy imagery, which is by far the easiest way to go, you do have some options. One option is to purchase declassified military satellite images, like the ones taken by the Corona program. Corona was a surveillance operation that was conducted by U.S. intelligence agencies from 1960 to about 1972. Images from the program were declassified by an executive order in 1995, and they're now used for all sorts of things, including finding archaeological sites. If you don't want to work with old black and white photos, you now also have the option of getting up-to-the-minute, high-resolution, color satellite images from companies like Digital Globe. There are also images that have been taken from the space shuttle. For example, there's a fairly well-known picture of the city of Angkor in Cambodia that was taken from the shuttle in which you can see all of the buildings very clearly. 